Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our webinar, Promoting Your Business During COVID-19. The Quad Cities Chamber strives to be your one-stop business resource to assist during the coronavirus pandemic, connecting you to reliable and accurate information. There's a lot of new information to process and respond to during these rapidly evolving and uncertain times. Uh, the Quad Cities Chamber is here for you, advocating for your business at the state and federal levels and providing resources to help you pr protect the health of your workforce and operations. We are committed to bringing you the latest information as quickly as possible. Our COVID-19 resource page on our website, quadcitieschamber.com, is updated several times a day. If you haven't signed up for our e-news, you can do that on our website as well. And we will get through this together. Uh, joining us today are Adrian Vanderwill and Natalie Linville Mass with MediaLink, who will provide us information on promoting your business during COVID-19. We will take questions from participants if time allows. If you have any questions, you should enter them into the Q&A box. And now I would like to turn it over to Adrian and Natalie. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. Okay, I will share my screen now. Could you please de-share? Wonderful. Okay, welcome to our talk, everybody. My name is Adrian. I have been with MediaLink for more than five years now, and I'm the senior marketing consultant with a specialty in digital advertising. MediaLink is a full-service advertising agency located in Rock Island. Here's a picture. If you've ever driven on 17th Street, you have probably seen us before. So today we are going to talk about communications during COVID-19. We will talk about the following elements, starting with a quick assessment of the situation and then going into online listings and social media, really briefly talking about paid advertising strategies and then um, addressing innovation and strategy in times of disruption. So on the left, you can pretty much see our current situation now. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty out there and misinformation that leads to stress and impatience, and then again to emotions and irrationality, and eventually it leads to standstill, chaos, recession. Nobody is purchasing anything anymore. Nobody is planning anything. So on the right side, our approach is to really focus on information and transparency, making sure that you can communicate to your stakeholders what they need to know right now so that they can consider their options and then make rational decisions, which include um, really having foresight, planning, and eventually taking action and, you know, again, being part of the market. So we will start with a really brief assessment. Um, I'm not going to go into detail too much here. It's a little bit like a homework before going through the other steps. It really makes sense to sit down and really go through these questions and answer them, starting with define your business model in one sentence and then write down your top three challenges you are facing right now as the accessibility or communications. Then um, write down your top five stakeholders. Maybe it's, you know, your customers would be the obvious ones, but also suppliers and employees. And then um, write down the top three challenges they are facing right now. Then write down your top five communications channels. Um, are you calling them usually? Do you have newsletters, social media? But also consider at least two additional ones you are not using yet. Afterwards, write down the five top five questions from your stakeholders, so what they need to know. Maybe they need to know how to order things, where to find updates, and so on. And then that pretty much tells you um, the information you need to communicate right now or later on. And in the end, you know, you really need to come up with a strategy, prioritize your messages, and align them to these stakeholders. Online listings. Basically, online listings is everywhere where your business online appears besides your website. So it could be on Yelp, Bing, MapQuest, you know, Yellow Pages would be a good example. So what we need to do is we need to identify where your information is located on the web. 
because that informs your customers. And I'm pretty sure you have a lot of updates to do. So I recommend using the Yext online listings scan. So you can go to this link here, type in your company information, and then it provides you with a list of listings where your company is um, yeah, online. And then the next step would be to identify the most important ones, really focus, claim them, meaning you own them and you are able to make changes and post updates. And for the purpose of this webinar, we are going to use Sizzle Pie as an example. Sizzle Pie is a pizza place in Eugene, Oregon. So that's on the right side where you see Sizzle Pie here. They have listings on all of these sites. Important, never provide your credit card information. Um, we are focusing really on services that are free, services that you can implement immediately after that webinar. Let's go um, to a couple of examples. The most prominent one being the Google My Business listing, which you can access at google.com slash business. So you can claim it there, and then you would need to update all the information and hours, just making sure there's no mistake, like the sizzle pie example here below, there's no dine-in at the moment, but takeout and delivery. So really making sure your clients can find you and know exactly what is possible, what is not. Then also a lot of people don't know, you can actually post updates on the Google listings update, and on the right side, you see an example of an update from sizzle pie, and also, um, some listings have a COVID-19 update feature. Also, just a reminder, so that's going to be a recording you can access afterwards. Being places for business, number two, um, really important. The same process, you, you know, look at your contact information um, and make sure everything is correct. Here you cannot post updates that would appear, um, but you can post pictures. So you can have your update as part um, of a picture and then upload it there. Yahoo business listing, also the same process. You would need to upload a picture to the photo gallery. And in green, I always note, noted where you can really verify your listing. Either use the link or just you know search for your business on the, um, on the search platform like Yahoo, Bing, or search, um, and then this will pop up. One more, so Yelp, TripAdvisor, and many, many more. Um, usually you appear on more listings than you might think. Here's an example of TripAdvisor on the top. And it's interesting, the hours here are actually different than the hours on Bing and Google's, uh, Google My Business. So there's already a mistake they need to fix. And Yelp is below here. You can claim it and update. You know, they posted a couple of updates from the business in a really consistent way, which is positive. You can order online during COVID-19, and you can also message for business with an app. So really summarizing here is be selective. Don't pay for anything, at least not yet. Um, be concise and consistent. Think beyond COVID-19, like the messaging feature. Maybe you want to implement it right now if you haven't done it yet because it doesn't cost anything. Um, and, so, you know, overall, be proactive and responsive to reviews and uh, messages from your clients, suppliers, staff members, and so on. So similar for social media here. Um, that's an example of uh, Sizzle Pie's Twitter feed. So two posts on the top, on the left side, you have the picture, special announcement, and they then they are posting more specific information in the text or like in the comments. On the right side, it's pretty much the same post but a different strategy. They're using the text in the picture immediately and then not having much in the description. Um, also, you can see that people are actually responding to it, and Sizzle Pie is really good at um, getting back to them. So, for example, on Facebook, important is if you post updates, um, date them. So really say April 13, 2020, this is happening right now so that people know, oh, that's the most recent one. Then set post expiration dates on Facebook. So if you post something, it will appear 
on the um, speed of people for a longer period of time. But you can say maybe you only want it to appear for three days because you expect in three days a new update will be due. So that reduces any misinformation um, and you know um, confusion. You can post, you can pin post to the top of your page so that people see it immediately and just generally be informative, consistent, and you can be a little bit more personal than you would usually be. Express gratitude for your community, to thank them for their service, for being there for you, and so on. Overall, also think beyond COVID-19, um, you know, it will be over eventually. So maybe you can sell gift cards. Maybe you can have some Facebook surveys to just generate um, relevant information that can help you later on. And people still have birthday, right? I had mine last week. So a gift card, gift card would be great. Also, Simple Pie, nice example on the left side, you see a post really engaging people. Um, usually people dine in there, but now they're encouraging people to submit their pictures of them eating the pizza at home, um, having the dogs there. So it's really a fun twist. On the right side, that might be interesting for people who have a big fan, fan base. So you could think about maybe selling merchandise you know, promoting your business if you can't do anything else right now. So here they are selling um, T-shirts of Sizzle Pie, which could also be a like temporary or even permanent revenue source. Facebook. So here I have a link. It's really, really um, a great source for everybody who is on Facebook. And some examples of what you can do here, proactively communicate and automate. So every time someone contacts you via the Facebook Messenger, um, you need to respond. A lot of people might contact you right now, so it's really straining on your resources. What you can do is you can implement automatic responses. So on the left side, you can see that here. Someone just says, hello. Instead of you having to respond, it immediately sends out a message saying, hi, Thank you for your message. Our retail store is closed, but we are still taking orders online. Um, send us a message. Would be nice to have a link there immediately. So it saves you a lot of time, and people can still respond to that if they have any more specific questions. But it's always good to have like an immediate response. Um, customers will appreciate it a lot. And here on the right side, later you can have a look at different versions that you know maybe might fit better to your business. Also on Facebook, I'm pretty sure you've seen that a lot of people are hosting online events and live events. Um, this is a really nice example you can see from a yoga studio. So nobody can go to yoga, but you can still post the video of people doing yoga um, live and everybody you know, that follows your Facebook page can just join, can comment, really just engage and you can have a fun time. And, you know, staying in contact with your clients that way um, is definitely a recommended action. And you can also do other things, like you can host a question and answer session. Maybe you have a favorite customer, so you can have interview. Maybe you can go through your store, take a video, explain people what you offer, what is going on. Be a little bit personal. Maybe you have a personal message. And in most cases, if you have that live, people can still watch it on Facebook afterwards. Also, don't be afraid. Everybody's just learning how to do all of that. Everybody is making mistakes. So now is the time to really experiment a little bit. Nobody's going to be mad. Paid advertising. That's a little bit my specialty. So um, I wanted to focus on a couple of areas, starting with awareness and as an example for a good awareness um, digital campaign platform, I chose Google Responsive Display Ads. So those are the ads you see you know, across the internet on a daily basis. So awareness is important right now. So even if you might not be able to sell your products or services, you still want people to remember that you exist because eventually they're going to start spending again. So you need to you know, remain top of mind. So once they are ready to do a purchase, they think about you first. 
So here are a couple of examples of these Google responsive display ads. They're really cost effective, they have a high reach, and a really sophisticated targeting, and um, really low requirements. So on the left side, here's one for the German American Heritage Center in Davenport. What you need for this kind of ad is a picture here. On top, you need a headline, virtual museum tour, your logo, and you need a description. That's it. And Google actually takes that information and merges it into different ad sizes. So to the right, you see pretty much the same ads, but in a 300 by 200 um, size format. So it looks a little bit different. So it can be placed on more placements online. And at the bottom, you see, again, the same content. It, it takes the same assets, but it creates a different size. And to the right, you see, or in the middle, iPad Mini 5, um, Taco Bell, limited time offer, order today. Those are ads I quickly created on my site. So that is something that can be set up really quickly without having to get a graphic designer involved. Remarketing. So I'm pretty sure you went to a website, um, you were interested in the product, and then for days later, you get ads about that product suddenly. That makes sense right now. So with the Google Display ads, people would click to your website, and what you can do is with the marketing, you can tag these individuals. And then later on, after they left your page, serve add to them on different platforms in different environments so that would apply to facebook instagram you can also doing that uh, do that by sending snapchat ads um, youtube and google display really there are so many different options that is really nice now because people might visit your website they're not ready to buy anything immediately but they will be ready later on so either you can just set it up, really build that audience of people interested, and either immediately serve these remarketing ads, just reminding them that you know they looked for the service and you do have that service, um, or you can wait for a month after everything is like over and then start that campaign. So you can do that up to 180 days later. So that's how long the person would stay in that audience in most cases. Yeah. Also, lead generation, similar system. So you have probably seen on Facebook ads like here, um, promoting an apartment. Once you click on that ad, it opens up a different window, maybe more information about the apartment or immediately at the last window here, which allows you to insert your name, your email address, your phone number, and then you can submit it to the apartment you know, owner. So the benefit here is maybe let's take a car. Maybe right now people, you know, they want to buy a car, but they wouldn't want to buy a car without really being there in person and physically seeing it. So you could still promote a car, have people provide their contact information, and then you can later on follow up on them, emailing them, calling them, whatever you think is better, or a long-term approach, add them to your like eblast newsletter list and just you know provide them with updates. Really important here is you know, once they submit the information, they do expect you to get back to them. So you need to have time to really respond to people. But this is a really nice way to use, you know, the current interest, yet hesitation, and um, leverage that information once people are ready to purchase again. The last element I want to really briefly talk about is innovation and strategy. So there's a lot going on right now, and I truly believe that every crisis there's opportunity to reflect about yourself, about your business, um, to identify strengths and weaknesses, and to implement innovative solutions that will make your business stronger and more competitive in the long term. Quick example, back to the German American Heritage Center and Museum in Davenport. 
they implemented a virtual museum. They didn't have that before. You can go to the website, look it up yourself. Here I have a couple of screenshots, left upper corner. That's the lobby. You can click then on the different buttons to go to the first floor gallery, third floor, to the permanent exhibit, even to the staff offices. So if you're curious about that, and below you see a you know, the screenshot of how the third floor gallery would look like. You can go through the exhibit. You can click on, you know, like the numbers on the right upper side. You can click on certain pieces and then read actually all the text. And they also included video. This is amazing. They didn't have that before. So the crisis really um, results in a really innovative way of bringing the museum to people. And you might be able to do the same by bringing your store to the people at least for now. A couple of tips and maybe things you might be able to implement on your site, depending on your business model, consider delivery, pickup. Maybe you can sell your products online, e-commerce. Post pictures and videos of your store and products, like the German American Heritage Center. You can promote that maybe in different areas, you know. Tell the story of your business, introduce family and share updates. That's especially important when it comes to younger generations because they really want to have an emotional connection with the business, not just buy a product. So now it's a good time to really tell your story, introduce, you know, everybody who's working with you to create that emotional connection. Also, you might Think about generating value by providing complementary services. Example, maybe you're selling avocados, right? Maybe online, just an example. So what you could do is, is you could set up a blog about recipes, how, you know, how to make your food using the avocados as like an added service for free. And maybe you can encourage people to submit their recipe and to really engage people that way. And um, that would be a really nice complement to your current business model. And who knows, maybe another revenue stream moving on, you know. So always think about post-COVID-19, not just about right now. Um, maybe you could set up a loyalty program now. Maybe you can still sell the gift cards that people can use later. So overall, I want everybody to take a step back and really analyze your business if you have the resources to do that right now. To do that, here just general business analysis tools like the SWOT analysis, analyzing your internal strengths and weaknesses and your external opportunities and threats. Pretty sure you know most of that most of you have heard about that. In the middle you have the 5C analysis focusing more on the company, customers, competitors, collaborators, and the climate. So there's certainly some overlap. And on the right side, the pastel one, that really focuses on your external environment. will also include legal environments, technology, like Zoom. How does this technology maybe impact your business model now? If all of that is boring for you and you want to do more, this is a value chain analysis. This is an advanced business analysis tool. I would only recommend that if you have done the others, um, but that basically points out your business's value proposition, what really makes you unique and really competitive. I would look it up online. That's a bigger one. Yeah, so we are coming to the end. What now? Immediately start with step one you know, answer the questions, then um, take care of the online listings and your social media. Consider, you know, paid advertising, ask, you know, assess your resources. Do you have time and money to do that right now? And also consider outsourcing it if you don't have time or the experience. It, it's basically like you outsource payroll um, or your taxes to a tax accountant. Take step number five, if you have time involves your entire staff, your family, friends, to think really about your business model and potential innovation. So at the end, also outsourcing considerations. If you want to do digital advertising, do you have experience with it? What is your time frame? Do you want to implement that right now or maybe later on? Do you have time to learn how to implement it? And do you even want to do that internally? 
just you know considerations and you can always you know you can always contact me with any questions whatsoever i'm happy to help and i thank everybody for attending today's webinar Well, thank you, Adrian and Natalie, for presenting this information and providing our members with uh, more information on promoting their business. Um, we have just a couple of questions. Um, I think we have time for that. Uh, one of the questions is, will this slide deck uh, be available afterwards? And it will be, we'll get that out to everybody. And Adrian, I know you had that last slide that kind of summed it up. But again, if you um, again could emphasize one thing that when somebody leaves today that they could do, what would that be? I would go through steps one, two, and three. Step one, really just answering these questions to just get a better grab of the situation you're right in. It will tell you who you need to communicate to. It will tell you what you need to communicate and how you need to communicate it. And that will inform you about steps two and three, which listings you need to use, which social media you need to use. Um, these steps can be done immediately. And again, they don't cost anything. People might contact you from these online listings platforms and might sell you certain features. I can say 95% of the cases, it's not worth it to do that, at least not right now in a spontaneous manner. So these three steps you can do immediately without yeah, paying anything. Okay, and Adrian, can you share your email address please with everybody? Most certainly, it is my name, so Adrian at media link inc dot com adrian at media link inc dot com okay and the yeah the pdf so everybody will get a copy of the presentation and that also will include uh, my contact information um adrian what percentage of a business budget would you target to marketing That is a really good question and a complex question, especially right now, because you you know there are a couple of benchmarks, but they apply to a like stable situation of doing business. Right now, I would say it really depends on where you are, so that's why this assessment is really important. Maybe right now you you know you can't really sell anything, but maybe you can offer gift cards or you can take orders. If you can do that, then it would be wise to definitely invest more than you would usually do. If you don't have any of these options, maybe you would focus a little bit more on awareness related, um, like the display ads that are more cost effective. So I'm hesitant to you know, just say like one number, but you can always you know, contact me and I can get more a little bit, like a little bit more information if I have some context. Okay. Um, well, we are coming up at the end of our program, and I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Again, this webinar has been recorded and will be available on our website, quadcitieschamber.com. Be sure to keep up to date with us on social media. And we want to thank Adrian and Natalie for joining us today and providing us with uh, really valuable information for our members. Um, to help implement and promote their business right down during this time. Uh, if you have any additional questions, if you want to direct those to Adrian, and thank you all for joining us. Have a great afternoon. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.